items are one of the most complicated systems in TFT, and in this video I'll cover everything you need to know about them. What the best in slot items are, what slamming items is, how to min-max components, balancing damage, utility, and frontline items, and lastly I'll talk about the radiant items that were introduced in set 5.5. A term that's thrown around a lot in the TFT community is BIS, which stands for best in slot. This refers to the three best items you can put on a single champion. To give an example, Karma's best in slot items are blue buff, death cap, and JG. If you achieve best in slot items for a carry, you are in a really good spot to get top 4, or even win the entire game in some cases. However, this doesn't mean that the best thing to do is always try and get these three specific items for your carry, as there are a lot of other factors that dedicate your placement, and these are factors like how strong is your frontline, how good are your tank and support items, how much HP do you have left, how many 2 stars do you have, etc. The point I'm trying to make here is that too many players hyper-focus on what best in slot items are for a champion, and a lot of the time you would have gotten way more value from making suboptimal items earlier to get more total item value. Let's just get the terminology out of the way first. Slamming an item means that you're making an item with the intention of going for long-term item value as opposed to short-term max value. An example of this is slamming a Sunfire Cape on stage 2-1. Sunfire Cape is a good item in the early game, but falls off mid-game and is straight up bad late game. However, since we made Sunfire Cape on stage 2-1, we're getting value out of it for the entire game. Say you die on stage 6-2, if you slam Sunfire on stage 2-1, you got 22 PvP rounds worth of value from it. But if you didn't slam it and greeted for Warmogs instead, say you were able to make it on stage 3-5 after the carousel, in that case, you only got 14 PvP rounds worth of total item value. So does this mean that slamming items on 2-1 is always correct and you should always make items whenever you have the option? Well, the answer to that is no, because there are more things to consider than just long-term total item value. The question you have to ask yourself is, how much better is Warmox than Sunfire Cape? And that also depends on the comp you're playing. If you're playing Dawnbringer Karma, Warmox is a very high value item as it synergizes insanely well with the trait. And it also synergizes well with Garen's spell, as it gets a bigger shield from Warmogs. Another thing to consider is the power spike your team gets with the Sunfire Cape. Say if a Sunfire Cape is the difference between you getting a 5 win stick or not in stage 2, then slamming Sunfire is almost always the play. And this is because we're getting so much value from the extra gold and HP, that it makes up for the total value from not having Warmogs later. The only times when slamming the Sunfire there is not the play, is if you're playing some form of cavalier reroll with Hecarim as the main carry. In that case, you want to save the chain vest for a bramble vest. This is because having bramble on him is really important to make sure he doesn't get bursted down. Another situation is if you're playing for a loss streak, and you're not currently looking for a power spike. Another thing to consider if you choose to not slam the Sunfire because you want the Wormogs, is what does the chain vest want to turn into? Say you're able to grab belt on stage 2 carousel, which is not always going to be the case, then you're still sitting on an open chain vest. If we keep going with the Dawnbringer example, the only good chain vest item in the comp is Bramble or a Shroud, so in that case we have to take another chain to complete an item that gives us a power spike. And that is not something we generally want to do, because we also need items for our main carry in that comp, so by greeting for Warmogs in that example, you have to be okay with leaving an open chain vest for a decent amount of time. So by then slamming Sunfire, we get to kill off a bad component in the chain vest. Killing off bad components means that you're making an item with two components that are bad for your comp. To explain what this means, let's look at this example. Here Robin Songs is looking to play Dawnbringer Karma, and for that comp, a bow component and a chain component are very low value. This is because the only good chain items are Bramble and Shroud, and the only good bow item is Giant Slayer. So in this situation, he's running Riven as the early and mid game carry for that comp, and he decides that he wants to slam Titans on Riven. Titans is not a good item in Dawnbringer, the only time you get value from it is in the late game if you get Garen 2 star. However, if we look at the items we're going to take from future carousels and armories, we need 3 more components to get 3 karma items. Therefore, we slam titans here as we will not make anything with those components until maybe wolves or raptors. And even then, titans might be the best thing that we can end up with. So by slamming titans here, we get more total value out of our items. We also get a little bit stronger as our main carry gets some extra damage, and it also lets us focus on taking items for karma in the future. The point I'm trying to make here is that you always need to think about how you can get the most value out of every single component, 
and if you don't slam an item, think about what those components will turn into instead. And then you have to consider if the lost item value is worth for the potential bigger power spike. So let's take a look at my personal item slam tier list. This tier list is assuming two things. Number one, that you're on stage 2-1, and number two, that you do not know what comp you're playing yet. In general, the way to win the early and mid game is through a strong frontline, and therefore the majority of the strong early game items are tank items. As you go further down the tier list, item starts becoming more specific to certain comps or champions. For example, Runan's Hurricane is a fantastic item on Yasuo, but it's not really core on anybody else but him. So slamming this early game is good if you think you're playing Yasuo. I also want to touch on the items in the F tier. It's generally very hard to get value out of those items in the early game, but that does not make them bad. An item like Frozen Heart is amazing on units like Diana and Viego, but those don't come into play until around level 8 or 7. Items like Shroud and Zephyr are fantastic in the late game once you can easily narrow it down who you're going to play, so just know that the more information you have on what comp you're playing, the further up some of these might go, and the further down some of these might also go. Now that you know why we make items early in mid game and which ones to take, let's talk about exactly when to make them. On stage 2-1, you will have 3 item components the majority of the time, but if we wait until stage 2-2, you will get another component and therefore more options. So a lot of the time, it is better to wait for the armory, a PvE round, or the carousel before you slam an item. However, don't wait too long as we still want to get as much total value out of our components as possible. Here are some general rules I follow when it comes to making or slamming items. If I have 3 or more components, I always consider making an item. If I have 4 or more components, I will make an item about 95% of the time. If I can wait 1 or 2 turns to get more options on what to make, it's okay to wait if there are no great items to slam right now. When I want to win streak, I will slam items more often. When I want to lost streak, it's okay to not slam any items in order to get max value once I power spike into a win streak later. But don't be a slave to these rules. The best TFT players are the ones that understand the rules, so to speak, but they also understand when to break these rules as well. Balancing tank versus utility versus damage items is also really important in TFT. If you have too much damage, you will never be able to get full value out of it, as your frontline doesn't buy you enough time to deal that damage. But if you have too much frontline, you have the time, but you have no damage to take advantage of that time. Utility is also a factor, this refers to items that stun, mana reeve, or slow the enemy team. Another way of thinking about utility items is frontline, but in a different form, because they reduce the damage of the enemy team which indirectly gives us more frontline. How you balance this depends on the comp you're playing. Different comps have different game plans and also different ways of winning fights. A comp like Assassin Nocturne wins by jumping to the backline and killing your damage carries right away. That comp is heavily loaded on the damage scale, as it will usually only run one or two tanks at the most, so it has a very small window of time to deal its damage. On the other side, we have a comp like Six Knights Kale. That comp only wants frontline, as you get quote unquote infinite damage once Kale hits her final ascension. What I'm trying to say is that you need to understand your comp's win condition before you can make a call on whether you need more damage, utility, or frontline. But also note that these things can be achieved by taking in different units and synergies as well. Say you're running a Lucian carry comp, and you only have damage items on Lucian and Akshan. In that case, you want to have as many tankiness synergies as possible as you already have a boatload of damage on your carries. But if you have the opposite problem of only having tank items, in that case only having two stacked frontliners might be enough, and then only taking in additional carries to get more damage in. Understanding your own comp's win condition is very important in order to make smart item decisions, and since I can't explain all the nuances of every comp in this video, I highly recommend you check out my comp guides where I explain all of these things for every specific comp, I'll link that playlist down in the description. A big part of TFT is being able to play around the best and worst case scenarios. Being able to secure a first place when you're high rolling is just as important as not going 8th when you're low rolling. One way we can avoid worst case scenarios is to be smart with the items we make. Let's take this example. Here we are on stage 4-2 and we've gotten all of our components besides the one we're going to take from the stage 4 carousel. You have a karma with blue buff. 
and you have Rod, Rod, Glub on the bench. Which items do you make? We know that Death Cap is Karma's best damage item, so making that is a no-brainer, right? Well, here is why it's important to plan ahead to avoid worst case scenarios. If we make Death Cap, we are left with a Glove as the last component, and the only good Karma item that Glove makes is JG, and Hajj is not good but it's not terrible either. Therefore, we're heavily relying on getting a Rod from the Carousel, and we can't guarantee that from happening. So now let's look at what happens if we make Jewel Gauntlet instead of Death Cap on Karma. The item is weaker than Death Cap, but still good. But the good part is that now we have an open rod. The rod items that are good on Karma are Archangels, Death Cap, and Jewel Gauntlet. So now we have three good options to take from the carousel, as opposed to just one or two in the other example. Lastly, let's talk about the new Radiant items. When you pick your Radiant items, there are a couple of different things you need to consider. Number one is, do you know what comp you're playing? And the second one is, what type of comps are people playing in the lobby? Thirdly, how many tank, utility, and damage items do you already have? To give an example, if you know you're playing Lucian in this game, then Radiant Hodge will be the best item to take. However, if the lobby is mostly AP, taking a Radiant Dragon Claw for your main tank is something to consider as well. But say you only have one damage item so far, then taking the Hodge is always correct. But if you have two damage items already, and you have a component for the third item, then taking D-Claw might be correct. But as a general rule, when taking your Radiant item, if you know which comp you're playing, take an item for that carry. If there isn't a good one for your carry, or you do not know which comp you're playing, then take a tank or utility item instead. I will split my Radiant item tier list into two parts, the best tank and utility items, and the best AD and AP items. First, let's take a look at the tank and utility one. The best one is Thieves' Gloves. You can never go wrong with taking this in any comp. Shroud, Zephyr, and Trapclaw being insanely good utility to your team and are great for any comp. Redemption is also great if you have a tanky comp that wants to stall. Warmogs, Decaw, and Bramble are generic good tank items that have the potential to be insanely strong but won't always be. That's why they're in B tier. Zizirot can be amazing if you lack frontline, but if you have good frontline, it's not that great. In C tier, we have Sunfire, which is only good in tanky comps. Locket is only good in comps that have a ton of melee units, and Sojin is only good on very specific utility units. In D tier, Gargoyles is only good on solo tanks, there are few users of Morello until the late game, and lastly Frozen Heart is only good on Diana. For the damage item tier list, I'm valuing flexibility and how strong the item actually is. This tier list is also general, if you already know which carry you're playing, and some things will obviously be stronger or weaker. In S tier, we have Hodge. This item is good on all carries in the game, and is therefore the most flexible item in the entire game as well. In A tier, we have BT, which is a good item on most AD carries, although it is somewhat lobby dependent. IE is great on all AD carries, and it's also good on AP carries if paired with JG. Zeke's is good in comps that have multiple carries, and it's even good to take to have a fourth item for your main carry. Deathblade is really good on some AD carries, but not on all. Same story with Titans. Deathcap is generally good on AP carries. Chalice is great in comps with multiple AP carries. Gunblade is actually really strong if you have a consistent DPS on your AP carry, and it will also be a bit lobby dependent. All the items in C tier are only good on some carries and lack flexibility, and in D tier we only have bad items. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord, we got over 3000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.